right have and have not fans this is my official review for season 7 episode 18 a six cents long story short um i'm giving it a 7 out of 10 uh because if you watched it then you know oh my gosh the last several minutes regarding the flashback veronica had of her honestly downward spiral into madness that's the best way to describe it but that kind of saved the episode for me this episode was one of the better ones of the season it wasn't great but it was i think better than the last couple episodes and yes uh, there were once again some very noticeable absences not only were candace and wyatt yet again missing from an episode because they weren't in last week's episode either but jim david and Catherine were not in this episode either uh, neither was Justin Mitch, but I really only take notice when the main, main cast is absent from an episode. And um, I'm not mad about it, to be completely honest, because even if they were in the episode, I honestly don't see what they could have brought to the table. I mean, how many times do we have to see Catherine in her cell? I need to hear about my son. Where's Wyatt? Where's my son? I need to be more comfortable in here. I am Catherine Cryer. Or Jim just laying up in the hospital. Either he's on the phone with David or David is walking into the hospital room just to give Jim an update on. I haven't been able to find anything. Um, I don't know where Wyatt is. And I didn't have a chance to see Cat. Well, we are seeing David in the next episode based off the trailer. So I wonder if he does go to the jail and we see Catherine. There. I don't know. But, um. Yeah, before going further, you know the drill. If you can go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, like it, I'd really appreciate it. Hit subscribe, that way you can help me reach a million subscribers someday. Hit the bell icon and select all, that way you don't miss out when I post new content. And finally, follow me on social media. Links are going to be in that description box below. Um, To be honest, man, I think I said this during my live stream. And, and guys, if you don't tune into the live streams... Th the after haves and have nots is um, live stream. That's probably one of the few, if only live streams I can guarantee will happen at a certain time. Basically, I watch the episode live at eight and I live tweet. And then around uh, not even, yeah, right around nine o'clock, 9.03 or sometimes like at 8.57 if I'm able to get everything set up quickly uh, due to a commercial break, I'll have the live stream going. And uh, then I'll be like, hey guys, let me, let's just watch this last scene together and watch the preview for next week and then we'll jump into the discussion but i have a blast doing the live streams more than the episode reviews lately only because these episodes have been so lackluster that uh there hasn't been much to talk about and i don't want to sit here and just rail on the episode for so long because we had a good time doing that during the uh, live stream but uh just a friendly reminder tonight we have the two hour season two premiere of sisters so we're getting episodes one and two of season two starting at 9 p.m now i'm hearing i'm hearing conflicting information uh some people are telling me that we're not getting house of pain and assisted living tonight at eight because of a uh, tyler perry movie i forget which one i don't know for sure i mean a lot of sources do say that we are getting the episode but i have no idea i i will play it by ear I will wait until 8 o'clock and see what happens. But whatever the case may be, I, I do plan to be watching Sisters Live and live tweeting. And if I'm up for it, I'll do a live stream because 11 p.m. is a bit late. But we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll let you all know. But, um, you know, I just wanted to do the intro just because this episode, eh, it was okay. But l let's just get into it. All right. So we start off uh, where we left off there. We have... Benny confronting Derek, uh, you know, telling Derek to get out of the And I don't want to sound bored, but I don't, I mean, there's really no need to be super energetic. I will, there were some good bits in this episode, I will say that, okay? So, yeah, Benny confronts Derek, makes him get out of the truck. Uh, he basically asks if you're the one who assaulted my mother, and Derek is pretty much dancing around the answer, pretty much stating, you know, wait, how do you know? Like, who told you? And Hannah really never told Benny. Benny just confronted her. In regards to the information Veronica provided and Hannah's like you know regardless of what happened leave it alone Benjamin so basically 
Derek tries to set the stage like, hey, I was young back then. I was into drugs and everything. And next thing you know, boom, Benny just, you know, I think hit some, was it in the face or in the stomach? Well, yeah, I took a nap. I was out for like four hours, so I don't really remember. I just know he got hit and, um, you know, D Derek gets knocked to the ground. Theme song and we got like a seven minute commercial break. Uh, he gets back, you know, we get back to the show and, you know, Derek's kind of, you know, wiping his face. So I'm guessing he was punching. There were two scenes in this episode. I mean, yeah, two scenes in this episode where I have no idea what happened because it was literally, excuse me, literally like a blink and you miss it moment where someone gets hit to the ground. Um, but while Derek's on the ground, you know, Benny's trying to make him get back up to fight him. But Derek's not going to fight Benny. And I will give, and I'm not saying I like Benny, but at the same time, I'm like, I do like the fact that he wants to fight his mother's ab assaulter on his feet as opposed to just kicking while he's down, which is interesting to think about because remember, you know, when Jim was uh, sitting in Catherine's house and he just kept calling Hannah and Candace out of their name and Hannah basically took Benny off the chain and let him attack Jim. You know, he didn't give a crap. He tackled Jim from the sofa. He, you know, dragged him on the floor. He beat the crap out of him, was kicking him, then dragged him out on the sidewalk outside of the house. But with Derek, he's like, no, 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 bro. You're going to get up and we're going to fight. So uh, after he refuses, Benny basically makes him leave, you know, all but, you know, threatens to kill him and, you know, picks him up and shoves him in the truck and, you know, just yells at him to get out of there. And he's like, well, I work here. What am I supposed to do? Well, you're fired. It's like, well, I need to make a living, man. It's like, well, get, get out of here. Don't ever come back. I'm like, Benny, you haven't worked since like season one. Like, who are you to fire somebody? Get the heck on. And then he goes back. And I'm just going to go. I'm going to talk about the scenes together. Like, you know, even though we have a couple other scenes before Benny talks for Hannah again. I think that's the easiest way to go through the review. So Benny go, bangs on the door like he's the police. Remember, this is Catherine's house. So he bangs on the door from uh, Hannah to open up and basically tells Hannah, I killed him and put him in the back of my truck. Hannah, like the color from her face almost left. I'm like, Benny, you need to just stop. But basically he's like, I knocked his ass out. I told him not to come around here again. And he's like, well, he works here. And, um, you know, Benny, this, I will say, I hated Benny for this, but it, okay. On the one side, because remember, go back to my interview with Keith Burke. We talked about this scene in regards to how Benny reacted to the news about, what he did to his mother. Yeah, that's the son of your that's the son of the woman you assaulted. Of course he's gonna be upset. He's not gonna to want to listen to reason. He doesn't care what kind of excuse you have. And you know, like when Derek was saying, you know, I just trying to make it how the how the hell are you gonna make it up um, you know, on assault. And remember, I'm not saying the R word because YouTube does not like it. Um, because trust it, I wish I could only because it really does um add some impact to the subject. But my favorite bit was when Hannah was like, he changed. I mean, that's if God, you know, shows me that somebody changed and I believe him. And then, you know, how the heck, you know, he changed. I'm thinking to myself, Benny, I, I was about to sound like Hannah for a second. Benjamin, throughout the course of the haves and the have nots, how many times has Candace fooled Benny into thinking that she has changed? She's like, Mom, Candace gone straight. She got a legit job. She's, you know, working in, she's in law school or she's working at this law firm or she has this, you know, rich boyfriend, you know, in the, in the lot, you know, I feel, I feel like uh, Benny has gone through more Candace's change storylines as why it has gotten high. And that's a lot. I just feel like you of all people are calling out your mother and look, Honestly, now that I think about it, this really does help the episode become better, even with brief scenes, because Hannah was able to work through the um, the trauma of her past, so to speak. Obviously, I don't think she's in the mood to see Derek, which I know last week people were asking, wait, was Derek there because he had a job to do or was Derek there because he knew Hannah would be there? I honestly don't know. I mean, based on what he said when Benny told him to leave, I don't know because part of me is like, did he say like, uh, well, what do you mean? Like, I need to make a living. I'm like, well, that's true. But when you came there today while Hannah was there alone, I mean, I've, we never see any of these other workers like the guys who, you know, keep 
up the upkeep of like the gardening or you know the pool or whatever so I, i'm assuming hannah was there alone but then again i don't think she was because remember we've seen before where um you know there have been different maids who work at the house so i i don't know but in any case i'm sorry if i'm rambling but honestly i didn't think about this during the live stream just because the episode was kind of meh um so yeah Hannah makes Benny go home and uh, he leaves right as Al arrives, who is um, another accountant. And he comes in, talks with Hannah and basically explains like, hey, later on tonight, I have a meeting. And remember, this meeting is with Don and John, the other accountants. I don't know who Al is. Is Al like somebody that was in the paperwork that um, what the hell is his name? Shoot. Lloyd is the banker. Who is the other guy? Mar Marty. Marty. Uh, I'm guessing that Al is one of the contacts that Marty gave Hannah to call. Or is Al just another... Uh, I don't know if Al is someone who works with the Cryer Estate or if he's just an accountant that is recommended by Marty for Hannah to get in touch with. I, I honestly have no idea. And again, guys, feel free to um, correct me in the comments. And I don't mean to come from a place of ignorance, but... Even for me, we're getting introduced to way too many characters, so I honestly could not tell you. But uh, long story short, Hannah wants to get some, um, basically like a cram session, if you will, wants some terminology involving accounting. That way, when she has um, the meeting with the two guys later on that night, she won't, you know, fully be ignorant. And, um, you know, Al's like, okay, let's uh, get the coffee first. But basically... He does want to see the paperwork, but Hannah doesn't fully trust him. So that kind of lets me know that Al probably isn't fully affiliated with Catherine. But at the same time, as the executor, I think that it's safe to assume that Hannah has more, I guess you could say, access to things than Al does. So basically, she didn't want Al to see sensitive information that an accountant wouldn't be privy to. I guess it's the best way to put it. Um, and yeah, I think, yeah, that's pretty much it for Benny and Hannah during the episode. Okay. So, uh, let's go over and know, I know that Al says some pretty questionable things in a preview for next week, but since that's in the trailer, I'll save that for my trailer breakdown. Um, then we go over to Madison, Colby and Jeffrey there at the lunch, you know, that they were going to in the last episode. And basically it's kind of like, um, the equivalent of, let's say, I feel like Colby was like the parental figure. It's almost like, you know, if you are bringing your girlfriend, boyfriend or whatever to your parents' house and your parents bring out, bust out the baby photos or embarrassing stories, that's pretty much what was happening between Madison, Colby and Jeffrey. Oh, he was a go-go dancer to pay for college and whatnot. And um, from there, you know, Madison goes to go back to uh, work and Colby and Jeffrey talk about the situation involving Veronica. But before that, Colby says, you know, hey, I can tell Madison really likes you. He's a great guy. This is the kind of stuff I like, you know, in regards to a lot of people saying Colby's extra or, you know, the uh, man, Tyler Perry is just one of many people who um, depict homosexual people in a raunchy, uh, rude demeanor. And that's not how all of us are, that kind of stuff. That's, you know, this just a quote from various comments that I've gotten on um episode reviews and whatnot regarding characters like this but i did like him in this episode i think this was the first episode i really liked colby because it was actually pretty except towards the end but i'll get to that uh just because i like these scenes where a person or character isn't acting over the top they're having a civil conversation which you can believe them having with another person you know in regards to madison's a great guy i can tell he likes you that's awesome um, but basically, he's pretty much vowing revenge on Veronica for Jeffrey's sake because Madison apparently told Colby just about everything there is to know about him to an extent in regards to like, you know, his parents and like, oh, you're you're rich. He's like, you he reminded me of that bit between um, what was it? Vanessa on um, the Cosby show where those there were girls at the school who were bullying her because, uh, oh, you're a rich kid. And then, you know, she came home and then her, her parents, Bill and Claire, are like, no, 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 we're rich. You're not. <laughs> so I like that. It's like, no, my dad's rich. So I, I just like that bit. That actually made me chuckle. And then also the line where it's like, so uh, Jeffrey asked Madison, so how many like partners have you had before me? He's like, bitch, do you got a calculator? I literally spit out my drink. That was hilarious. Um, okay. 
So then we go over to Jeffrey and Colby there at Madison's place. And um, off screen, I'm guessing that Jeffrey's telling Colby all the various evil, vile things Veronica has done since uh, he has come out. I wonder if that included things like, you know, oh, yeah, she got this guy out of jail, Quincy, to uh, beat me up. And, you know, she arranged for me to impregnate a woman and have us get married and blackmail me and this and that. I wonder if all I'm going to assume that stuff was just said off screen because Colby was just freaking out about it. And um, there were two guys he brought over. Trevor and some I could have sworn it was Trevor and Terry some people are telling me it was Trevor and Harry I don't know but then again it's like Tyler Perry has this weird thing with names where he either recycles names or has characters whose names rhyme or whatever like Don and John the accountants and Trevor and Terry to TT whatever and uh, they come up with a great idea to hey let's take Jeffrey's drunk idea of skinny dipping in Veronica wait did I don't remember, did did Jeffrey say skinny dipping or did he say, hey, let's go over to my mom's house and have sex and then she'll see us? That's what I thought he said. I don't know where the skinny dipping came from. I don't remember. Honestly, I don't remember. Because, yeah, that was like in the first episode when it came back in August, so I don't know. But, um, yeah, I mean, they take a few more shots and leave. And then I'll cover, you know, the ending, ending of the episode when we get to the ending of the episode. Um, then another scene, we got Laura returning and man, she looked good. What? I don't know if it was like, you know, the way she got out of the car, like, you know, the heels or, you know, the, um, the wig or whatever. But again, this, she's just being groomed to be Veronica's body double. She approaches Samuel. They're at the front door. He's, uh, you know, trying to finish up the front door camera and, um, him and Laura are talking about the situation. Like, you know, Samuel isn't sure what to make of Veronica's like, you know, Hey, you look good in this, but remember what Derek said, we shouldn't trust her. And, um, you're like, no, she's nice. She's like, yeah, she might be mean to everyone else, but she's nice to me. Then they start kissing and Veronica opens the door and, you know, it's a little bit of an awkward moment. She tells Laura to come inside and, you know, her and Samuel kind of exchange glances and, uh, he gets back to work. And, um, okay. I will mention this from the preview. We know that Veronica's going to make a phone call to get Intel on Samuel, and because she apparently knows that he and Laura are up to something, which goes back to the sometimes characters talk about their plans in the worst places. So the fact that Veronica opened the door while they're kissing try, kind of signifies that, yeah, she was probably there listening to the entire conversation. So they probably blew their cover. And uh, from there, let's see here. Do, 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 do. We get a brief scene at the Malone bar. Uh, once again, just a rinse and repeat of the same thing. Vinny's telling Sandy to toughen up. Oh, what are you going to do about that girl, Rihanna? You know, his ex or whatever, who apparently is seeing another guy and Sandy doesn't know about it. I mean, what? Didn't know about the abortion. Didn't know about the um, boyfriend. There's just, Wait, did Sandy know about the I mean, all I know is Vinny's like, Sandy, there's a lot you don't know. I don't know. But uh, basically, Vinny kind of back, you know, talks back, and I'm like, "Yo, that's this ain't just your uncle Vinny anymore. This is this is the Don. I mean, like, did you talk back to Mama Rose at any point? Uh, basically, calling him out about, I was like, "Oh, you 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 always uh, being rough on me, but what about you and that crier kid? He cut you, and you ain't do nothing to him." And uh, somebody told me that Vinny like kicked him again. I turned my head for like three seconds to tweet. Next thing you know, Sandy's on the phone like, wait, did he get punched? Did he get shoved? What happened? Uh, somebody's like, no, he got kicked out of the chair. And then, you know, Vinny kicks him out of the bar and tells him to uh, toughen up and then come back. And that's about it. Like, seriously, how many times do we have to see these scenes? Like, I mean, again, I, I don't mind the Malones, but I just feel like it's the same old thing. Um, Okay, I think there's only two more things for me to talk about, like the uh, Charles plot and then at the end where Veronica's out. So, like I said in my life, I've gotten just tired of the Charles thing. And again, I know some people just can't wait for our Candace and um, Charles to get back together, but I don't care. Basically, um, Oliver comes over to Landon. He's calling Amy about setting up shows, a uh, morning show and primetime special appearances with Charles, um, guaranteeing that Candace Young will be there as well. And um, 
Long story short, Oliver is basically saying all the, I don't like Oliver at all, but Oliver is saying every, he, I agree with everything he says. He's basically exact, he's saying verbatim what Landon was saying when Charles first said, I want Candace Young. It's bad for your image. She has a long rap sheet. It's going to demolish you. She's a whore. She's a backstabber. She's a con artist. And then Landon did what Charles wanted, tried his best to clean things up. But then something happened that even he couldn't control. I forgot what it was. I know it was uh, Candace was at the White House. Apparently, a lot of people outed her. Basically, the um, Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby. It basically like the Me Too movement, but it was the men who were shoving forward saying, and these were like apparently a lot of powerful like businessmen, lawyers and whatnot. Candace Young, she's a whore. She conned me and this and that. And then that make uh, Charles look bad. And because Landon wasn't able to clean it up, he got fired, even though he did everything within his power. And it wasn't even a setup. Landon had nothing to do with that. So now all of a sudden he's being hard on Oliver because I do like the bit where, you know, Oliver was talking smack. Charles came out. Then this fool had like a little baby. And I knew, I knew he was going to blame Landon for this because he almost got fired. I'm surprised he didn't get fired or at least get hit in the face like he did with Landon. But um, basically, Charles goes into the back and uh, he goes, uh, Oliver goes off on Landon. It's like, look, 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 look. I had nothing to do with this. It's like, you knew he was back there. Well, eh. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. But um, in any case, um, Landon even tries to speak up for Oliver, but Charles like, no, 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 let him talk. I was talking to him. And then, you know, as soon as Oliver goes and um, Landon goes to talk with Charles, he basically talks about how does he have a point? Because Oliver says, Gretchen, he's a good girl for uh, Charles, you know, good image and everything. And to be honest, I, I mean, it's Landon talking about happiness versus Oliver talking about what the people want to see in a president. That's a very good discussion. And I'm not trying to make this in regards to like what real world politics, but that actually is a valid point. I actually did not mind that conversation. I just don't like the Charles storyline because of the fact that it's like rinse and repeat. Um, the fact that he he's like one of those friends who wants your advice. But then when you give them the advice and then let's say they either take it or do the opposite, they're still going to blame you when things don't go the way that they want them to go. That's pretty much how I feel about Charles. But in any case, um, uh, Charles like, Hey, can, can you get my kids? I want to just go for a walk. And you know, Landon just tries to turn into a potential photo op, but Charles like, no. And it's like, okay. Okay. So, um, that's the end of that. And I believe, yeah, let's go over to the couple of last scenes here. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, actually, there's a guy who was unnamed, and I didn't care to look at the end credits to get his name. Basically, I'm just guessing like another agent or Secret Service person. Um, he gives Landon some information on Akil, the uh, basically like the guy from New Zealand, the one with the accent. He was the same guy who had Benny tied to a chair with gunpoint, and um, he's the one that gave Oliver those drugs. Basically. He was a former Marine. Uh, him and 12 other guys were operating outside of New Mexico. He's been seen with um, Oliver several times. He was flown out to see Oliver um, via private jet, one of his father's private jets. Basically, all we know on him is that he's a drug runner, gives Oliver cocaine and whatnot. And apparently, he's watching this woman, Veronica Harrington, for Jim Cryer. And he's also watching uh, Candace. They're like, wh why? Why? Uh, they don't know. So basically, Landon is basically going to set a trap a slow trap to get Oliver. I'm like, yay, a slow trap. That's probably going to take like five seasons to play out. Assuming the show goes on that long. I honestly don't care. Um, then they mention, Oh, you got a haircut. Rudy. That's the barber. Hit him up. Okay. Uh, so then we go over to Veronica's house and, um, this is most likely the best scene of the episode. The one everybody's talking about. It was, first of all, I don't even think we got a commercial break during like the last 10 minutes. I was shocked by that. Like, literally, the last 10 minutes, there was no commercial break. I don't think we've seen anything like that since the episode 15 minutes, where we had that long scene between Candace and Hannah when they make up. And I liked it. I was actually pretty shocked. Um, I was actually hoping for a commercial break to go use the restroom. but Because typically, the episode goes off at, like, you know, 8.53, comes back at 8.57, and then it officially ends at, like, 9.01. But, no, we went right through. So, Jeffrey and the guys arrive at the pool. 
uh, peer pressure Jeffrey doesn't want to do it. So the three guys strip down and jump in the pool. And well, actually, they don't jump in the pool like they strip down. And um, I'm guessing that Samuel had uh, come. Yeah. I, yeah. Because what did he tell Laura? It's like, hey, um, I'm going to go home, shower and everything. I'll get your favorite meal or uh, your favorite dinner ready. And apparently, I guess he just came back to get the equipment. And um, so while he's doing that, the three, you know, Colby goes up to him first, like, mm, forget that old hag. I want to talk to him. And it's like, this is where I kind of didn't like Colby because it's like, you know, if somebody tells you they're clearly not interested and you are making them uncomfortable, you might want to step back because you're just being rude. And then you wonder why people attack people who do stuff like you. And then you want to play the victim card. Because, oh, he's homophobic. He's like, nah, B, you had your meat pointed in my direction and I didn't want it. Like, leave me alone. But, um, so Samuel, like, goes in the house to tell, uh, Veronica, there are some naked guys in your pool. And then, um, you know, Jeffrey is like, oh my God. And so Veronica tells him, it's like, get the hell out of my pool. And it's like, there are gay people in this world. Your son's gay. Get used to it. And then she goes in the house, gets the gun and. I was kind of upset. Well, honestly, a lot of people were upset because I thought we all thought the episode was going to end with the gun being pointed at the pool and people getting shot. But no, we just got Veronica getting the gun and then the episode fades to black. And that's it. Uh, so, yeah, the flashback. Let's go back to that. I kind of skipped it. It was great. I thought it was fantastic. We had so many scenes that I haven't even thought about in years, like Veronica and the blonde Maggie wig and, you know, the Sarandon Hotel where she caught David and Maggie together and then, um, you know, David and Erica and then going back to season one. This was great because it was just like a reminder. Well, I mean, it was great, but then not so great because of the fact that this flashback sequence, the montage, it just reminded you of, yeah, remember when this show was really good? <laughs> I mean, seriously, like part of me was like, okay, I think Tyler Perry just kind of threw this in here for padding purposes because Again, I didn't mind it. I loved it, but I'm just sitting looking at the clock like, damn, how long is this going to go for? Because after like maybe three scenes, I'm like, okay. But then, like, whoa, okay, three minutes. I could be wrong. I need to go back and time it. Maybe I'll do a video on the flashback itself. But um, I think that the flashback had to be a good five to seven minutes long. Again, I could be over-exaggerating or it just felt longer than it was. But I, I loved it. Like the editing, the cuts, they were great. I think one of my favorite sequences during the uh, flashback is when Veronica, we see her in her normal colors. What I mean by that is like when she's wearing the red dress, like she's, you know, in normal like color, but then everything else around her is like a, you know, a, a photo background, like brown or gray or whatever. So I, it's like, damn, this, she crazy. I mean, it was like her whole descent into madness. And like when she was tearing up the bar at the Serena Hotel, when Dave was like, you simple bitch. That was the scene that really encapsulated, okay, yeah, something wrong with Veronica. But once again, this is when the show, or this is when the show was really, really, really good. Like back in those days during the early seasons. Because, um, yeah, it was great. It was great. But aside from that, that's honestly all I have to say about this episode. Um, Yeah, 7 out of 10. Because the montage saved it. And yeah, now that I think about it more, the David, I mean, excuse me, the uh, Benny and Ver uh, Hannah scene was actually better than expected. But uh, yeah, we had a lot of missing characters in action. And um, we only got two episodes left. I was kind of disappointed because the trailer for this week was indeed exciting. But the episode in execution wasn't that exciting, wasn't that great. It was one of the better ones of the season, but the bar still hasn't been set too high. So, yeah, I'm still this season so far is the worst to me. It really is. So we'll have to wait and see how it finishes up. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, if you would like to donate to the channel, feel free to do so on PayPal, Cash App or join Patreon for as little as one dollar a month.